Joining us on the Wells Report, Deborah Medina. Good afternoon, John. Good to have you here, Ms. Deborah Medina. Sorry to hold you up there, but we wanted to tell everybody about registering to vote, and I knew that you wouldn't mind. Not at all, although did I hear her say you don't need any identification to register to vote? In you know, you don't need any identification to register to vote in Texas. You don't need a water bill. You just have to be able to fill out the application. So all that fighting we were doing over that picture ID stuff, if you can, like, get your name on the roll. Yeah. Oh. So you're going to do something about that when you're elected governor, right? Yeah, we've been watching that pretty closely. I've actually testified before the House Committee on Elections during the interim and the Senate State Affairs uh, Committee. We've got some real issues, I think, not only in Texas but around the country with the way we've been conducting elections, and that's a little disconcerting. I was not aware that you didn't have to present any type of evidence of who you were or, or at least uh, registered to vote in Texas. That's at least the case in Tarrant County. So, so yeah, that's that's going to have to that's going to have to change. I mean, you know, this is a case of you know, we've talked about this before. This is a case where politicians have run away with our governmental process for their own particular interests, less the interests of the people. In other words, they no longer work for us. They work for themselves. And Ms. Medina you know, this is why your campaign has gotten so much traction, because at least you represent somebody that doesn't appear to be walking down that same road. That's true, is it not? It is true. I think that in, in this issue in particular, we spent such a huge part of this last session getting bogged down on voter ID, and we see it time, you know, session after session after session. It's a bone to keep us happy. The real issue may not be whether or not I show up with a picture ID if I got my name on the list already and it shouldn't be on there. Shouldn't we start with the sanctity of the list? You would think. You would think. You would think. This is so annoying I could spit. And I and I am and I, and once again this is why we're doing the Who's Next project. We are going to we are going to change the face of politics in America and try to find people that are interested in working for us as opposed to working for their next election, working for a fat uh, campaign contribution chest or or something along these lines. We're going to stop this. We have to. We've got to get back to citizen servant leaders. Uh, rather than people that are out for their next election and their government retirement and benefits. Um, serious problems in Texas and around the country, and we're fighting the good fight in this campaign and picking up lots of support every day. I had the opportunity a few days ago to say, you know, those polls that are showing you Kay and Rick with 30% apiece and then the somebody else has got 32 or 34 that's somebody else's deborah medina we're leading in those polls they just don't know it yet isn't that incredible they're still doing that they're still doing that i noticed that when you announced uh for your candidacy and so on you were certainly in the mix from a standpoint of of what they were doing with their research and their polling and so on and so on and uh and they still haven't attached your name to those numbers yet huh occasionally we'll see it mentioned but for the most part we're still talking at the I think a lot of the media outlets and a lot of the um, pollsters are still talking about Kay and Rick. Boy, the people, the grassroots um, are are learning about this other candidate out there, and there's a tremendous amount of enthusiasm for that everywhere I go. I had an opportunity uh, this weekend to speak at the Come and Take It event in Gonzales, Texas, and then up um, just north of Austin in Apache Pass to speak to the coalition of clubs, motorcycle riders from all over the state, had a couple of thousand people out there, very excited to find a candidate who is going to stand for the people. Yeah, well, that's what we're looking for. Deborah Medina is our guest. She joins us on the Wells Report here on Talk Radio 570 KLIF. She is running for governor as a Republican, and uh, she would like you to ask her a question or, uh, actually, I was going to say or two, but we can't do that because we want to make sure that everybody has a chance to ask Deborah Medina a question. She's running again Against Kay Bailey Hutchison. She's running against Rick Perry. She is running to be the governor of Texas. Do you have a question for Deborah Medina? Please join us. All right, John David from Burleson, please join us with your question only for Deborah Medina. Well, Miss Medina, you used a phrase a while ago, servant leaders. It kind of touched a nerve with me. I'm wondering if she's familiar with the Robert Lee Greenleaf philosophy of servant leadership and how that would apply 
to her leadership as governor. All right. Thanks, J.D. Thank you. I do not know Robert Greenleaf, but I will look that up. But, yes, uh, servant leadership ought to definitely define where we're going. Well, uh, we certainly have had professional politicians taking this government wherever they wanted to. Where I think I think what's the, the recurring thing in this, the recurring theme in everything that we've done for about the last two years is the fact that the government is, is operating in and of its own self. And if you're not part of that, I think you've got a great chance, Deborah. I think that uh, we certainly see it as an opportunity here. And and I want to tell you, John David, this isn't something that we've been cooking up for months. You know, I first got tapped on the shoulder back in November and asked to consider, and it took me four months to get to yes. And that was before we saw the tea parties. It was because I was fed up with what I had seen. I had worked hard as an activist for nearly 20 years and just couldn't stomach more of the same and decided to get into what I have, have often called a David and two Goliaths race. I'm very gratified to see there are lots of people that feel just like I do out there, and they are supporting my candidacy for that reason. I am one of us uh, working hard to put dinner on the table and pay the mortgage and get the kids through college and having my government uh, steal my liberty every day, and I'm tired of it. David in Dallas, what's your question for Deborah Medina? Deborah, did you vote or did you not vote for Barack Obama? I did not. Thanks very much. Uh, let's talk to Kevin in Waxahachie. Kevin, welcome to the Wells Report here on Talk Radio 570 KLIF. Hi. Uh, thank you, Deborah, for taking my question, and I look forward to seeing you in Mansfield on the 24th. Uh, you have talked about how you want to eliminate the property tax, and that sounds like the perfect plan to me. Can you elaborate on your plan to replace that with a broader base sale tax? Again, it goes, that goes back to the legislature. We're working with state representatives and senators already to begin to talk about how that can happen. We understand that uh, that will come from them and must come from them. So I'm encouraging everybody that's supporting this campaign to begin to have that conversation with your legislators. We can eliminate property tax in Texas fund the necessary government services with a broader base sales tax that will um, allow our economy to produce more effectively, more efficiently, and raise personal income in the state about $3 billion. All right. Vivian in Gainesville, what's your question? Will you support open carry in Texas, yes or no? Thank you. Yes. All right. (laughs) Lance in Fort Worth. We're moving fast through these, man. Let me tell you, we're getting questions answered. If you're a politician, I'm sorry. I'm supposed to be stammering and stuttering and not giving direct answers. I guess. I guess that's the way it's supposed to be, huh? Mike in Dallas. Welcome to the Wells Report on Talk Radio 570 KLIF. Yes. If any recourse at all, what is your thinking on the bill that the Senate passed, I guess, Friday night, where you have to rest for all your guns, starting January 1? They value them at fifty dollars, and then they tell you which ones you can keep. I don't know anything about that uh, that law. Do you know anything about that? I haven't read that particular bill, John David. But you know, as we look at more and more federal legislation coming that infringes on our right to keep and bear arms, I, I put up a pretty uh, lengthy op-ed on that just on Friday and said. You know, not only did our founders intend for us to own them, they intended for us to understand how to use them, and that's, that shall not be infringed. Texas has got to stand on our state sovereignty and tell the federal government you have no authority to infringe that right. Texas is going to keep and maintain that right. We need to use nullification and interposition to fight the federal government where they reach uh, for those kinds of regulations. All right, Greg in Weatherford, what's your question for Deborah Medina? I'd like to know if she's for executions or death penalty or against it. Uh, death penalty. I have been a supporter of the death penalty, but I tell you, um, we've certainly seen a number of things that ought to cause us pause here in Texas. I'm a big a pro-life advocate, and I talk about the duty of the government to protect innocent life. Uh, I believe that there are some crimes so heinous that the death penalty is the only just penalty. On the other hand, when we have cases like the Todd Willingham case, I think we have to all recognize that we've got something wrong with our system, and until we can get that um, corrected, we probably ought to place a moratorium on death penalties here in Texas.